Um, so the thing with emotion of no confidence is that you have to be 100% committed either way. To stand up and be counted, whether you've got confidence in the president or not, you have to be absolutely sure. And with this in mind, I'm going to outline a few reasons why, as a team, everyone who signed the petition is sure that they have no confidence in the president. So firstly, and I think most importantly, actually, this isn't a vendetta or a witch hunt or a public hanging or any of these other very emotive words and phrases that have been bandied around. This is actually an informed belief that Rachel is just not able to perform the duties required of the UHISA president. As a student body, we don't hear much from Rachel. We've gone to student councils now without having a written accountability report from her. So technically, we're not entirely sure what she's been filling her time with since November 2013. There's been a lot of debate on social media and other places about the executive's decision to overrule the liberation voting motion from Spring Student Council. Now, this motion, I know, had done the rounds. So it had been rejected by the Elections Committee. It had been rejected by the student body. And it should never have been considered at an exec meeting let alone one that was on the line in terms of being quartered. And Rachel knew this was the case because in early in 2013, she had attended a similar exec meeting and the then president, which was Katrina Payton, who was the president I worked with, is minuted as explaining that a student council motion had fallen and thus no discussion further was necessary. Rachel spent a lot of time last year complaining that budgetary restrictions were causing problems for UHISA, and she pinned this, rightly or wrongly, on UHI. However, this year, she's asked the executive to pay her relocation expenses, which is a misuse of public funds, given that on taking the job, it's on the understanding that she can be based anywhere around the network, and not just in Vaness. And I know this because it's very similar to the contract I signed back in June 2012. Um, Rachel has had a lot of support, and I was specifically asked to mention this fact by someone who's witnessed it firsthand. So as well as support from her fellow officers, who I'm sure you're meeting at this present time, um, Rachel secured the administrative support of Clare Island, and UHI staff have poured a lot of time and energy into ensuring she doesn't feel abandoned by the university. But still her work's going wanting. So when I submitted a censor, which was later approved by the exec, it was in the hope that things would change and that Rachel would see the places she needed to improve. And this hasn't happened. I could resubmit the censor right now and it would be an equally accurate description of her work. So no student council accountability report, no minutes on the website, blatant disregard for the constitution. I hoped, and I know other students hoped too, that the censor would improve things but nothing's changed. And therefore, along with 201 other students, I would like to cite 7.5.4 of the UHISA Constitution, which states that an allegation of gross misconduct is a suitable reason for no confidence. And just to clarify, because there's been a few questions about this, gross misconduct in this case refers to Rachel's continued failure to do the job she's paid to do for you despite extensive support measures being put in place by many people. And I'll finish off now and say again that this isn't a personal attack. It's an acknowledgement that the UHI students deserve something better than they're getting at the moment. And with that in mind, I would, from the bottom of my heart, and I'm sure from the bottom of the hearts of the 201 other students, like to wish Rachel all the best in whatever she goes on to do next. Just please, when you vote, don't let that be bringing our Fragile Students Association to its knees. Okay, thank you, Kevin. I'll take questions now. Okay. Right, so if I've, I've just found the mic, Judith, so hopefully you can hear me a bit better now. You can, oh, good. Okay. Can. Um, are there any questions for Judith? Uh, yes. is all being changed and that UHISA is basically soon to be dead anyway. I understand why you've submitted this motion and I think that democratic process is wonderful but does it not all seem a bit pointless? 
when you heister is out the window anyway. And really, we just need to be represented right now. Okay, um, thank you very much for your question. And um, before I go on to answer it, thank you very much to whoever just made it so that I could see you while you were asking that. Um, okay, yes, it is really important that your high service represented du during the student representation project. Um, I remember, as a few other people who are there will also remember, the early days of, of the student representation project before anyone was actually hired to work on it. And one thing we wanted to make sure was that UHISA had a strong voice. But at the moment, I think the people who have signed the No Confidence don't believe UHISA has a strong voice. We actually think that there could be a by-election after a vote of No Confidence, there would be a by-election, and a stronger person, well, stronger person in terms of the job itself could be appointed. Um, and that would give UHISA a lot more say so in the student representation project it's definitely late in the day you know and i'm i'm sad that that's the case uh, i wish it hadn't got to this point where we are we're looking at changes being implemented very soon um and we're having a no confidence but i hoped the sensor would change things and it hasn't and i think now we need to make emergency measures which include finding someone who can voice what you heiter thinks on the matter um in a, in a better way. Does that answer your question? Partially, yes. Okay. Do you want to re-ask any part of it before we go on, or? Uh, well, I mean, isn't this pointless because you heister is going soon anyway? There's not really much point in salvaging you heister if it's not going to be around much longer. Okay, yeah, sorry. I think that was, you were probably quiet while you were saying that bit. Um, Okay, yeah, I can see that, um, but I think most of the people who are getting involved actually hope that UHISA still will be, or at least the essence of UHISA still will be around. So yes, these massive changes are happening, but up until very recently, we had this feeling that everything that had been achieved over the years would still be there. So I think we're hoping that it won't be pointless because, um, because if we get a new president in now, they will take the essence of UHISA into the student representation project and further. Does that answer your question, Beth? Thank you. Thank you. I think you've got one more question. Um, okay, um, uh, I know, Judith, you've been a big driver behind this petition, but Luke's been the main uh, person. So if he feels so strongly about this issue, what's his reason for not being here today to up for okay, um, I have been a big driver behind the petition. I think actually every single voice in those 202 students um, has been a major driver because without them, the petition wouldn't have gone ahead. Um, I got involved in student politics back in 2009 when I was appointed a class rep. And um, I did it so that I could rep represent students who didn't feel confident in representing themselves. So I don't think anyone who is involved in student representation can necessarily, con necessarily condemn someone's decision to ask for a representative. Um, I hope I'm representing Luke um, to the best of my ability, but actually that's not top of my list. Top of my list is representing the petition because I believe in it just as passionately as Luke does, just as passionately as 200, and, well, minus me and Luke, 200 other students do. Um, I'm not technically here to represent Luke as a person, I'm here to represent the petition that he submitted. I think we've got one more question at the front here. Um, there has been quite a few strange allegations going on um, that seem quite strange. Um, one, two actual questions after following from that was, um, one, uh, you guys are, I think just as a structure hasn't been working and I think it seems hard to pin it on any one person. I'm just wondering where the evidence is to simply pin it on one person, and that's the president. And also the other question is, I think the question was just asked was, uh, why Luke isn't here today? Um, and I'm, I'm not getting at any of that, but I, I don't think that answered the question. I'm just wondering, um, is there any particular reason why Luke isn't here today? Um, okay, I'll answer your second question first, because that's an easier question to answer. Um, okay, as far as I'm aware, and as far as I'm concerned, Luke's decision not to attend is his decision. Um, I'm not going to go into it. I personally know why he isn't attending. 
but if you would like to ask him, please ask him. But I don't actually see that has any bearing on the petition itself, because I am here, I am talking about the petition. I have been fully involved in it since its, first, it, since its beginnings. Um, so I, I respect the fact you're ask, asking that question as Rebecca asked the question, but actually the fact Luke isn't here is kind of negligible because someone is here who believes very passionately in the petition that's been put forward. Okay, so going on to um, your first question, the simple answer is that a lot of responsibility lies with the president. Um, now, rightly or wrongly, it does I mean, Yohaisa has one governing document, and that is the Constitution. It's not rich on policy or anything like that, like many other more um, mature student associations and student unions are. Um, so the Constitution is is the Yohaisa Bible, if you like. Um, it is the go-to book. And there are many things in that book that says, this is the president's job, this is the president's job, this is the president's job. And many of these things Rachel has failed to do. So, for example, one thing that's been discussed a lot at the moment is the minutes. So, the, But it is in the Constitution that it is the role of the president to put the minutes out there to everyone. You know, and yet it's not happening. So whilst it may be the fault of the minute taker, whoever that is, I don't want to start throwing around blame, but whilst it may be their fault... Even if it is, it's then Rachel's job to chase them up. So she she is caught in this kind of vicious circle, and I see that, but it is still her job. And there are many jobs where we don't feel entirely comfortable with aspects of them, or um, we think that aspects of them are unfair. It doesn't really matter. Um, if, if she has a problem um, getting the minutes from someone, it's just her job. She has to make sure the minutes come. So basically... The reason it's all falling on Rachel's shoulders is because when you look at the Constitution, it is her who's going against many of the of the sections in that, including her own job description. Does that answer your question? Sort of, yeah. I think it's <laughs> Thank you. We've got another question. Thank you. We've got another question from DC from Michael. Refer reference has been made to uh, the Constitution, the Constitution being a Bible. Uh, I've studied the Constitution uh, as a lawyer, and I have to say that the Constitution is a mess. Uh, it's not Rachel's uh, fault that it's a mess. It's not uh, the fault of the present uh, student body or the present or, or any previous student council and still less the fault of the current executive, which I'm a member of. What has happened, as far as I can piece it together, is that over the years, it's successive presidents, and I'm talking back to two lots of presidents back, um, have departed from the Constitution in many various ways, some of them more serious than others. I'll give you an example. Uh, all the resolutions that come before student council in my time have been improper. They have not been in, in accordance with the Constitution. The Constitution demands 20 signatures for a, a resolution to be considered by a student council. So on that absolutely fundamental level, we are not adhering to the Constitution. So as a lawyer advising uh, the current executive as best I can, I have said to them that if we can adhere to the spirit of the Constitution as far as we possibly can, that is the best that we can do unless or until there's a wholesale review of the Constitution. And given that Yohaisa's uh, lifespan is limited, it seemed to be rather pointless to go into that exercise. Although I have prepared a document, it has been accepted by uh, the um, executive for a fairer way of conducting student council, and I hope that that is put into effect. I'm nearly finished. Uh, I think that background is important because reference has been made uh, by Judith, which is why I came in here at this point, uh, to the Constitution. The Constitution does... Uh, authorize the executive to deal 
with business at a student council where the student council was not quoted. Now, although I've made the point that the business before the student council was unconstitutional in the first place, uh, the wording that's here runs, in the event of a meeting not having the required quorum, that's a meeting of student council, any business requiring resolution shall pass to the UHISA executive committee for determination. Now, it is therefore not strictly true to say that the, <laughs> the executive overturned uh, a, a matter that had been before student council. A, it was not properly before student council. B, student council was not quoted. And C, uh, if you are referring to the constitution, uh, then it is a matter uh, in terms of the constitution for the executive anyway. I think it's important that these points are clarified. I'm sorry to have taken so long to it, but as you'll appreciate, the position is complicated. No, thank you, Michael. Um, I mean, I don't think I, I know how hard you've worked trying to persuade us to change the constitution over a period of, of time. And I know that that does go back to the days of, of Nathan and, and Chris. And I do think that deserves some recognition. So thank you very much for that. And thank you for, um, for mentioning what you've mentioned today. Um, I have to say um, that <laughs> to me, you, the spirit of the constitution is not to change what the student body asked for. Yes, student council in spring was not quorum. Period. You know, so the UHISA exec can go on and do whatever they like with those motions, which is what you're saying, which is fair enough. That's in the constitution. But how is it in the spirit of an elected student official to change what the student body is? I mean, it was a not quorum meeting, but there were still more people than there were at this exec meeting. How is it in the spirit of an elected student representative to change what the student body want? You know, and so, yes, um, if, if the exec really wanted to do it, they could do it constitutionally. But I do think that is um, that says something about Rachel as a student representative. You know, the fact that she um, she didn't. Um, it didn't matter to her what the student body was saying, basically. Um, and also, I see what you're saying about the Constitution as a whole um, and how there are things that desperately need changing. But um, this is about Rachel's job description as well. She is in a paid job. You know, this is not a volunteer post or anything like that. She is actually in a paid job and she's not doing what she's employed to do. So with the constitution as the only um only way of of confirming what her job is supposed to be um that's why people who signed the petition reached the conclusion they did because um we can see what Rachel is supposed to do in her job because of the constitution and we can go through and tick most of these things as things she is failing to do now, um, I wish we did have a constitution that was foolproof. I really did. I really do. And I did when I was in office as well. But we don't. But in the spirit of the constitution, to coin your phrase, I think that it is fair to hold Rachel to account for the fact that she's failing to do her job. Thank you. To come back on two points. Uh, first is... Sorry? Michael, uh, sorry, if you want to ask any questions, that's fine, but we're not having a debate. Fair enough. Okay. Um, are, there, are there any, right, there's more questions in the room, so. Sorry. Um, Judith, you're saying you're representing 202 people who signed the petition, but the publicly available petition, the wording of which we can all see on change.org, and that's what Luke and, and you yourself have been linking everything to. The wording of that petition has changed several times. And the wording of the petition when I was asked by Luke to sign it, which I did not, was substantially different to the wording that it is now and to the wording that it was when it was presented to UHISA. Um, in particular, one of the original wordings of the petition included an accusation of bullying, which is now being retracted. And I feel that you can't represent students correctly if they have signed a petition dealing with an accusation of bullying, and that accusation has subsequently disappeared with no explanation. What is your explanation for the changing of the wording? 
Okay, um, thank you for your question. Um, actually, there was an explanation, and a quick look on the um, petition on change.org will show that Luke did immediately put something up saying that he was taking the bullying allegation off, and the reason that he was taking it off was because it was very difficult to prove. Um, so there was actually a justification for the removal of that. As far as I'm aware, that's the only change that's been to the petition. At least that's the case as of last night. Um, uh, let me think. Um, does that answer your question? Well, or no, would you like me to go further? The bullying is not the only change. The current wording, as far as last night, um, says uh, a blatant falsehood regarding the uh, liberation question, uh, which says that Rachel has individually requiring students to reveal their sexuality. Um, and that's the that's not a change. I have to disagree with you there. That is not a change to the wording. I'm that sorry, wording Judith. was there from the beginning. And Judith, as far as I'm aware, that's not what the wording was the first time I saw that petition. Okay, so that's, that's the statement in question. Uh, yeah. Judith, do you need to respond to that statement in question? Um, well, I, I can't do more than disagree with you. You know, I mean, I don't want to make it um, I'm a liar or you're a liar, but I have to say when I signed the petition, and I believe I was one of the first people to sign the online petition, um, it, the wording, apart from the bullying, was the same as it is now. Um, the other thing is, is that actually Luke did have people asking to be removed from the petition, who he removed. So people did keep up to date with what was being said, and if they wanted to be removed from the petition, they got in touch and he said, right, fair, that's fine, I'll remove you. So people were seeing it as a fluid thing, and there were 60 signatures when Luke removed the part about bullying, um, and we got 202 in the end. So I think, you know, a majority of people came on after that had been removed. Okay, I think we've got another question. I'd like to start, you know, sure, there's one or two more questions. That's fine, but I don't know where we'll um, end with uh, the um, <coughs> It's just to um, quickly touch on, like the other question you said, but quickly touch on that. Yeah, I do actually see what's being said there. Um, the petition does seem to have changed quite a few times, and I, I really don't understand why it's, it's changing credible amount of times, like frankly, because of uh, Anyway, but regardless of that, uh, that's how it's taken over. Um, also, another thing is, successive presidents throughout Yuhaiza all seem to have been having similar troubles to Rachel. And I would, I would say that if continuous presidents are having the exact same problems again and again and again, I don't see how we could pin it on, on Rachel herself. I, I think that's probably more of an issue in Yuhaiza itself as a structure, making it very hard for presidents to, to do anything with her. And I think that, that needs to be addressed mostly. Um, so I was just wondering what your take on that is because I, I really, um, the fact that continuous presidents again and again and again have the exact same problems, I, I think it's really, really wrong just to, to, to pin it on the, this last president who, who's done a similar thing. And also, of course, um, there is uh, recently, of course, uh, and I'm not doing anything on Luke, but of course there was a recent thing that Yuhaiza is now, and has been for a lot of while now, it's been functioning at half its, half of its capability, because of course Luke won deputy president and congratulations to him, but he then pulled out for whatever reason, I, I, I don't but um, uh, as a result, uh, because of Luke, um, and I, I'm not doing anything, I'm sure he's got his own reasons to pull down, but Yuhaiza hasn't been able to function very well at all for recently uh, because of that, uh, making it, I think, far, even harder to pin things on Rachel. But, of course, the, the original essence of the question is that if continuous presidents have had the exact same questions over and over again, why is it right to pin on Rachel? I really do think it's the system that needs to be changed. And I don't think that that can be done by any other different president, any other president. Yeah, thank you for your question. Um, I am sure um, particularly Ian, who I think is still there, will know that no one feels stronger than I do about how alone a sabbatical officer can feel and the problems that they face. It was, there were horrendous days, weeks, I don't want to say months for me when I was in office. Um, and I know just how lonely it is. I know just how many problems you have, just how little support you have, even when Certain people from UHI and from UHISA are giving you all the support they can. You can still feel very lonely. Mostly, I realize now as I go through um, more standard jobs, uh, as a result of no line management, um, you get a lot of support from UHI, but they quite clearly do not line manage you. And uh, I always like to be the boss, but I have to admit, I do like to be line managed. Um, so I think successive 
sabbaticals have had these problems. You know, I, I would go further than you. I would, you know, I was the VP and um, at that time it's a full time job. Um, and I felt like I had these sort of problems. I know Katrina did. Me and Katrina did not see eye to eye. Anyone who worked with us will tell you that. Um, I imagine that Nathan did, and I think I've been told that Chris did as well, um, and I know Amy did from before as well. You're absolutely right. All these sabbaticals have faced massive problems, um, and there are massive problems to be faced um, absolutely definitely by incoming sabbaticals as well. What the difference is, is that Rachel has not found a way to deal with these problems, you know, to the benefit of Uhaisa. So um, all the presidents and all the sabbaticals who came before have faced these problems, had tough times, absolutely, definitely, but they all found a way around it to make sure that the students did not suffer as a result. And I just, I, I don't see how we can, we can deny that the students are suffering when I received the student council papers and there's no motions. You know, there's no one wants to change anything. I can't believe that. You know, students are suffering as a result of the fact that the president is not able to deal with the problems that other presidents have been able to deal with. I would say also, long before my time, um, but there was another no confidence. This is not a new thing for you, hi, sir. Um, this is not saying that Rachel is the worst sabbatical officer ever to have um, graced the halls of Uhaisa. Um This is actually, the, you know, we have had other presidents who haven't been able to do the job that they are um, employed to do. Um, it happens, you know. I, I, I just think I would, I would echo what you're saying about the problems faced. I don't think that is an excuse for not doing your job properly. Does that answer your question? Um, partly, but yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>